Welcome to the MapInfo Discover webinar series. The presentation will start shortly. Let's take a look at some of the features that are available to you with the point classification. And what this feature will allow you to do is to identify spatial trends in your data and also to show you relationship of trends to subgroups of data within a sample population. So you can think about this as the map info thematic maps on steroids. The point classification can provide you the capability to adjust point styles according to attributes in a similar but more powerful way than thematic maps. It supports classifying by three different properties independently, for example, by color, by size, or by symbol. This allows by applying a classification on each of the three point symbol properties, up to three attributes for each point to be displayed graphically and simultaneously. Point classification can be displayed as a thematic map overlay, or a new point symbol can be saved to an existing table, or you can create a new table. Classification schemes can be applied to either character or numeric field, and various statistical numerical groupings can be applied, such as percentiles or log percent. So having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these capabilities. And for this example, the first thing that I need to do is I need to load some data to work with. And what I'm going to do now is go up to File, Open, and I am going to select a table that's in the NCOM training directory. It's part of the Mount ISA project, and the table that we're going to open is in the geochemistry folder. So I'm going to select that, and the table that I'm going to open is called ISA Stream Geochem. So I'm going to select that and open it. And once I've opened it, what I'm going to do is let me enlarge the window slightly, and I'm coming back and I'm going to zoom to full extents. So you can see that this is quite a dense sample population, and it would be quite nice to find some way of classifying these points. So the next thing that I need to do now that I've looked at the data is let's go ahead and take a look at the same data set in a browser window to see which fields or attributes we have to work with. And so you can see here what we've got is there's the data set, we've got the sample number, They've included uh, X and Y coordinates, which are good. Here's the project name, the company, the lith unit or geology unit. And we've got three different assay values here that have been collected, both copper, lead, and zinc. And what I would like to do now is I'd like to add an additional column, and I would like to load that with the combined metal values for these three assay values. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is let's come up to Table, Maintenance, and let's select ta Table Structure, and I'm going to add a field. Let's call this field Total Metal, T-O-T-A-L underscore M-E-T-A-L, and the, the field type needs to be Float. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and say OK. And I think what I want to do is let's bring back the browser window so we can see what we have that we're working with here. And you can see the value is zero. So what I need to do is let's go ahead and update that column. So we're going to say table, update column. And the column that we're going to update is going to be total metal. And we're going to get the value, let me just use the assist tool. And I'm going to select the combination of copper and I'm going to add to that the column of lead, and I'm going to add to that the column zinc. So now that I've done that, I can click the Verify button, and syntax is correct, so I'll say OK, and OK again. Now I already have a browser table open, so I don't need to check the box that says Browse Results. And then I'm just going to say OK. So let's click that box. And you can see now that the uh, total metal field has been filled in 
with a combination of copper, lead, and zinc for each one of these records. So that's what it is that we're wanting to work with. Now that I've done that, let's go ahead and save the table. So let's say Save Table. And you can see there's just one table that we've modified. So we're going to click the Save button. All right. So next, let's go ahead and open a map window because we want to see this visually. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to enlarge the window slightly and zoom to the full extent. Now we're pretty well ready to take a look at some of these capabilities. This concludes the seminar. For additional information on webinars and training services, visit our website at http www.geographicsworld.com or contact us at 520-744-4457.